Hello, and welcome to this latest weekly tasting. Together with WTSO, I'm really excited to take you somewhere new for this experience. Let's go to South Africa. With its rich history, diverse cultures, beautiful landscapes, and equally colorful wine and food, there's so much about South Africa to celebrate. And I think after this tasting, you'll be a believer too. So come along with me as we taste four wines from the Rainbow Nation. Now, because of its location at the very southern tip of the continent, South Africa has seen a lot of visitors over time. Portuguese sailors, Dutch traders, British colonizers, and of course, dozens of native African tribes. Inevitably, South Africa is a melting pot. Today, the Constitution recognizes 11 official languages, including the native Zulu and Kosa, and European languages like Dutch Africans and English. Wine has been made in South Africa for over 370 years, and grapes were brought to the Cape by the Dutch. In 1652, Dr. Jan van Rijbeek was commissioned with setting up a medical outpost for the Dutch East India Company, and he brought some French grapevines along with him. His plantings paved the way for South Africa's first winery. In its early years, South Africa was best known for its sweet dessert wines, but eventually they fell out of fashion, and when they did, the industry switched over to distilling grape brandy, which slowed down wine production to a trickle. But perhaps the biggest setback for South African wine was the establishment of a cooperative known as the KWV. The KWV was a white-owned monopoly that dominated the market and largely cut out small farmers and under-apartheid black Africans. And it wasn't until 1998 when the KWV was finally privatized and forced to pay reparations that the South African wine industry was set free. The inclusion of black Africans into the wine industry brings the story full circle and finally gives the original inhabitants of this land their rightful place and voice. That being said, there's still a long way to equity in the industry. South Africa is just one-eighth the size of the United States, but it has a huge range of climates. The Cape's unique geography and climate make it surprisingly conducive to wine production and, no surprise, a rich biodiversity that ranks it sixth in the world. The wines in this tasting are from the coastal region, which is hilly and mountainous, and influenced by cool currents coming up from Antarctica. So, despite being south of the equator, this is a mostly temperate climate, which is key to growing high-quality wine grapes. And with that bit of background, it's time to taste these wines and talk about the producers. This is Nordhoek Sauvignon Blanc from Cape Point Vineyards, and it comes with some fairly high rankings and awards, so I'm pretty excited to try it. And it's worth pointing out that this winery has a female winemaker, and that shouldn't be a big deal, but it still kind of is in South Africa. The winery is located on the Cape Peninsula, on the slopes of the Chapman's Peak mountain range, and it's just three quarters of a mile away from the Atlantic Ocean. And this is very cool. Some of the vineyards that they use to make this particular wine are located in the shadows of the mountain range, which help keep the grapes cool and produce wines that are higher in acidity. And Sauvignon Blanc tends to thrive in cooler temperatures, so this is key. All right, give that a swirl and a sniff. And of course, a taste. First word that comes to mind is clean. It's so fresh and vibrant. It's got this zingy citrus acidity to it, and there's an herbaceousness in there, which probably comes from those cooler climate vineyards. It kind of uh, tastes and smells a little bit like bell pepper. When I was doing research for this wine, I discovered a new term that I'd never heard before, something called finbos or finbos. And finbos is a vegetation that grows on the hills in South Africa and gives off this very herbaceous scent. And I can't be sure, but I'd venture to say there's some finbos in this glass here. Good wine transports you to the place that it comes from when you drink it. And when I drink this wine, I can picture myself on that breezy hillside overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. So how about a little Chardonnay? This is the Elgin Chardonnay from Sutherland. And the Elgin Valley is located southeast of Cape Town, and it's set on a high plateau surrounded by four mountain ranges. The vineyards are situated just five miles off the Atlantic Ocean. And these are higher elevation vineyards, so we're seeing a common thread in South Africa, where they're using proximity to the ocean and elevation to maintain the temperatures in their vineyards and create wines that are fresh and clean. Wow, it's super intense. This is a more full-bodied Chardonnay, definitely uh, nodding a little bit to California with some oak treatment. There's a lot of creme brulee and lemon meringue in there, but it still has that nice fresh acidity, as we're finding in these South African wines. But like our previous wine, there is a little bit of herbaceousness here, and I wonder if this is a trend. This is a nice and clean Chardonnay that leans a little bit more towards the New World, California style, but it manages to stay light and fresh, which is a nod to the Old World, French style. How about we switch to some red wine? This is the Saxonburg 2017 Private Collection Syrah, and this one is a silver medal winner from Decanter Wine Awards. 
Now this is one of the oldest farms in South Africa. It was officially proclaimed in 1693. And the three guinea fowl on the bottle are a nod to the biodiversity in the region. This vineyard is situated in the Polderkai Hills of Stellenbosch and is exposed to both False Bay and Table Bay, which gives the influence of the ocean breezes. And these are also high elevation vineyards. It'll be interesting to see how that affects a red wine. And Syrah is one of my favorite grapes, so I can't wait to try this. This is one of the reasons why I love Syrah so much, because it's got these juicy berry flavors in it, but it's also so well balanced with that acidity in there as well. One thing I'm really appreciating about these wines from South Africa so far is that they're very clean. This would be impressive for a French Syrah, but the fact that it comes from South Africa is even more impressive. They're making some really fantastic wines here. This is the Lanzarac 2017 Cabernet Sauvignon from Stellenbosch. Lanzarac was established in 1692, so just 13 years after Stellenbosch itself. Lanzarac is located in the Yonkers Hook Valley of Stellenbosch and, like the rest of our wineries, is flanked by mountains. Wow. <laughs> It's really dominant in cassis, which is what you would expect from classic Cabernet Sauvignon. There's a word in the wine industry that's sort of fallen out of fashion in the last couple of years, linear. But I think it describes this wine perfectly. Um, when you taste a Cabernet Sauvignon grape in the vineyard, it tastes almost exactly like this. So the purity of the grape carries forward straight from the vineyard into the glass and, of course, to your palate and nose. It's a bold and spicy Cabernet Sauvignon, and it's got a little bit of a resinous stickiness to it from 20 months of oak aging. Honestly, I think this Cabernet could probably age for another 10 years, which is a testimony to the high-quality wines that they're making in South Africa. There's one additional thing I want to point out about all of our wines here, and that's the Quality Assurance label. This is the Sustainable Wine of South Africa certification, and it assures the quality of these grapes and wines in several different ways. Everything from meeting environmental guidelines to ensuring the health and safety of the workers at the vineyards. With eight different major ports, there's a world of flavors coming in and going out of South Africa. So we should probably talk about some food pairings. Today we have some recipes from Chef Matthew McCartney. The Bluefish Riettes are a cold appetizer that are gonna be perfect for a chilled glass of the Sauvignon Blanc. In South Africa, there's a fish called snook, which is similar to bluefish. And the grassy notes in this wine will work well with the herbs, capers, and citrus. Next, we're gonna pair the Chardonnay up with some shrimp peri-peri. Peri-peri sauce is native to South Africa. It was invented by the Portuguese settlers who used the local bird's eye chilies from Ethiopia. And that Chardonnay is juicy and bold enough to stand up to the spice of the sauce and also cleanse the palate afterward. For this lovely Syrah, we have lamb chops with fennel and mango chutney. A Syrah and lamb are a classic pairing, and lamb is also a prized dish in South Africa. The coriander spice will be key here, as it'll bring out some of that peppery, spicy quality in the Syrah, and that chutney is balanced with a hint of sweetness to keep the wine's high alcohol in check. For the Cabernet, we have a culotte steak with a spiced herb chutney. A steak is always a sure bet with Cabernet, and this recipe is inspired by the infamous chimichurri in Argentina, but it infuses some Indian spice into chutney to tie it in with the Asian influence in South African cuisine. So, this has been quite the adventure. We learned so much today, and I hope this tasting has inspired you to embrace the beautiful diversity and sometimes hidden colors of the Rainbow Nation. And who knows, maybe you'll even go visit for yourself one day. I know I'd like to. Well, thanks for joining me today, and if you want to purchase these wines or anything through Wines Still Sold Out, don't forget to use my discount code, MARK2021, to get $10 off your purchase at checkout. Until next time, Hambakale. <laughs>